one of the reasons that we do the the aquas, or not one of the reasons, the main reason for for uh, for doing these acquisitions is um, if we if we just stayed, and most of you would have seen that graph that I've shared so many times in the past of what would have happened if we remained as a as a, as a construction materials company. Um, most of you would have seen that graph, and if we if we just remained where we are, there would be no justification for for being listed. Uh, we would not be able to create the value, and the whole the whole energy, the whole uh, dynamic of the of the company would have been dead. So we do this uh, these acquisitions to consistently create value and make sure that we grow the business over time, and. Our strategy is is pretty much it's entrenched in our diversification uh, approach where we where we have, have really diversified the portfolio, I, I believe very well. That has created a very strong cash uh, cash stream over the years, and for the 15 years that we've been listed, we've never had, had to tap into the market uh, to to fund our growth. We could do that from our existing cash flow, and that has always had to have uh, worked very well. Um, but to get that right, we had to allocate capital very, very wisely, and that is that is a very strong part of the uh, the Afrimat uh, approach. So, just as a reminder, and you saw that in the video, now we started off in construction materials. That's why we are at the moment still listed in uh, in the construction materials sector of the JSE. Um, after the crisis in 2008, we diversified into industrial mineral. That forced us to become a little bit more sophisticated in terms of our operations and, and mining techniques. Uh, the next logical thing for us was iron ore. Um, it was uh, at the time we uh, we thought it was an opportune time when the when the prices of the commodity was uh, at a, at a almost an all time low, uh, or in any case a decade low point. Um, we then bought the iron ore mine. Uh, started getting more sophisticated in terms of our, our knowledge in terms of geology, uh, metallurgy, mining engineering, and all the other aspects that's so important in, in this sort of thing. We then acquired uh, the anthracite mine uh, and, uh, and, the, uh, and, and the manganese acquisition that we've just recently um, announced. So where we are now... A big focus of our acquisitions were in the bulk commodities. That is our latest addition. So we've been doing most of our bolt-ons in that space uh, in the recent past. It doesn't mean that's the only bolt-ons we'll do. We are looking at some other opportunities in the other, in the other business units. But uh, for now, what we've done over the last five years is to add Demaning. Um, that does about 870,000 tons per annum of exports, uh, Jenkins. Uh, we've just started that up now. That uh, in the first year of operations, we do 500,000 tons per annum, ramping up to 1.25 million tons uh, in the uh, um, in the years to in the in, in year two, and from there on, um, we have more than 20 years uh, life of mine there. In Kumati, uh, we uh, have just managed to put that mine back into full production. After being uh, hampered by by floods that that flooded the mine earlier this year, we got that all sorted. The mine is back in production. There we expect to do about 225,000 tons of sales in this financial year, ramping it up to 540 next year. And then Kramanacher is our latest acquisition. That's a manganese mine that we are busy with a development. There's more than 20 years life, and it's a very very interesting uh, uh, acquisition. Um, as you can see, Demaneng has a relatively short life left, but Driukspan and Dorenpan, the two mines that came as part of the uh, Koza acquisition, is being developed to take over from, from Demaneng to secure that, that long-term uh, position as well. So Jenkins, the mine that, uh, that we bought as part of the, uh, uh, the Koza acquisition, uh, first production started in, in uh, June, July, we, we started with first production. All our licensing has been approved, the mining license, the water license, everything is in place. The product from this mine will go to uh, our domestic customers, so it's not, it's not being exported. Um, and uh, it, it is a so-called DSO, direct shipping ore, 
which means that it, uh, it, there's no beneficiation losses. And especially in the first couple of years, um, the, the, uh, the product is also very shallow with very low stripping ratio. So the cost of production should be very low. We have a, a life of mine, a proven reserve of more than 20 years life. We need to spend about 110 million rand in capital to, to get that mine to full production. Uh, the first phase uh, has been done to put the, the basic infrastructure in place. Um, and now that we're ramping it up, we are, we are starting to develop uh, or, or build a, a crushing plant on site, uh, which will uh, improve efficiencies from the, uh, from the current mobile crushes that we have on site. Nkumati, that was a very interesting transaction. Uh, we acquired Unicorn Capital Partners, which was a listed company. Uh, we then bought Nkumati Anthracite out of there. It was quite a complicated transaction because there were uh, shareholders in that business and the shareholders were not uh, actually uh, bringing, uh, uh, or, or bringing their side as shareholders into, into that mine and forced that mine to go into business rescue. But we then bought that out of business rescue and then we sold Unicorn Capital Partners again. Um, and when everything is said and done with, with the Unicorn Capital Partners deal, we, we managed to keep 45 million rand or, 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 or that was what we basically got after everything was settled, um, uh, which we could put to good use to start developing uh, in Pumati. Um, we've been doing extensive exploration work to make, to make sure that we understand that the information on the ore body was relatively limited, um, and we had to get a, a proper uh, understanding of the deposit. And as a matter of fact, that, that uh, drilling work is still uh, carrying on as we speak. Um, the tropical storm, uh, Eloise, uh, hit us uh, earlier this year. I think it was in, late in February when the, uh, when the mine was flooded. We got five and a half million cubic meters of water in the pit. Um, that brought the mine to a grinding halt. We took the, the mining team across and we started opening up what we call the mini pit. Um, and that was opened in record time. But as we speak, everything is back in production and we are ramping that, that mine back up to, to full production. Um, so uh, we, we still believe that this is a very exciting opportunity. This really is the best quality anthracite in the country um, and it needs proper management and proper planning uh, to, get, to make sure that you manage the geological challenges that that mine could have. But it is a, a very, very uh, valuable asset we once again we expect to spend about 100 million in this financial year to get in capital to get that mine to its uh, full potential. The exciting one that we announced recently is Grabenacher. Grabenacher is a manganese mining right. And what what I want to point out here is the sequencing. So we we did the mining, got it up and running working well, we got all, we went through that learning curve and it's working well and it's really producing excellent results. Then we went on and we expanded our iron ore, ore base and we have a strategy to make sure that we, we entrench our footprint on, on iron ore in the Northern Cape. Um, and we, we managed to get Jenkins up and running. Now it is in production. We've got the team in place. It's, they are successful. We did the same with in Kumati. That is now running and we are going to start seeing the, the results in the second half of this financial year. Um, and then the next logical thing for us is now to start thinking what, what is going to happen next year and the year after that. And Grabenhage is really what we're excited about here. It's going to add manganese to our portfolio. Um, it should add, add significant value. We, we think there's enormous value in this, in this asset. It has more than 20 years life of mine. It's a really high quality reserve. Actually, the, the last really high quality reserve that is available in the Kalahari manganese field. Um, and it was still available because of some legal action that, that held this mine away from production for many years. That has been resolved. So we then uh, managed to buy this, this mine. Gives us additional foreign currency exposure, which is a very good thing currently. Um, we, sh we also should have, we will have, very good synergies with our team in the Northern Cape. We've got a, a very, very competent team uh, running Demoning and Jenkins, and we can we can leverage that 
to uh, to our position in in the Northern Cape. Um, and but we are we are developing a business plan in line with the way Afrimat does things to make sure that we ramp up at the right rate, that we spend capital in the right rate, and we uh, we should be able to to do that. Um, we 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 should be able to do that off our own resources, given uh, given the, the condition of the business at the moment. Our first payment will go probably in the first quarter of next year, when we have to uh, pay thirty million dollars, when all the approvals and all the conditions present in the contract has been met, um, and then uh, after that we have to pay another fifteen million uh, once the mine is in production and starts generating revenue. Um, which really helps with the with the peak funding of the mine, um, and we are still busy with the capital plans and the I implementation plans. We have enough time until next year before we can really start working on site to make sure that we we've optimised that business to get the real value that 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 asset can have with the minimum risk um, and addressing all the different risk aspects that uh, we've identified. Yeah, I want to start. Um with the sport analogy, and, and, and in sport, your scoreboard is is the um, shows you what's going on 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 the field, and it's a result of your score. Yeah, it's a result of what's uh, the planning and, and the game plan that's on the field. And I want to pull that back to the business. Um, the financial results is the scoreboard of your decisions, um, your strategic decisions, your technical decisions that you make throughout the business. Um, so the, the results that I'm going to share is, is the result that we published in February, um, and, and this will show you that that the strategic decisions um, that we made um, and, and the diversification strategy is working. Our compound annual growth rate in profit after tax over the last 12 years showed a 22% growth. Um, so yeah, it's showing that that the diversification strategy is working, that there's strong cash generation. Um, in in the business, and this um, cash that we generate uh, will support our acquisition. So, if you look at the results at this portfolio um, of the of the three different segments, um, you will see it's a diversified, still a diversified portfolio. In 2021, bulk commodities co contribute 43% um, to the revenue. Where construction materials also contribute 43%. Um, and industrial minerals con contributed 14%. On the operating profit level, you will see there's a um, there's a bigger contribution from bulk commodities, but it is in in this um, financial year where the construction materials and industrial minerals businesses were were heavily impacted by the lockdown levels in, in April and May last year. Um, they have since bounced back, and you will see on the next slide. Um, uh, on, on this slide, you will see that um, the, the, the second half of the year in the revenue and, um, and operating profit, um, it, there's a big bounce back um, in, in that year. And where we normally had a 50-50 over the first um, six months compared to the second six months of the financial year, um, we, we have now a 60% uh, contribution in the second half of the year and a 40% and contribution in um in, in the first half of the year. So the headline earnings per share um, grew over the last four, five years, compared and growth rate by 22.5%. And um, the last year's growth is 27%. If you look at the balance sheet, um, the biggest impact on the balance sheet um, is in commodity that is now included. Um, we, we managed to sell all the other assets out of Unicorn Capital Partners and, and that allowed us not, not to consolidate um, all the debt that was in that business. Um, so the, the, the changes in, in this current year is, is mainly um, um, in commodity that is now included. In property plant equipment, for example, there's a 360 million mining asset included. You will see that strong cash generation, the cash balance has grew to 871 million on this side. On, on the borrowing side, you will see that the debt to equity ratio improved from 8.2% to 3.8% in the current year. Um, yeah, so that's on the balance sheet. Um, on the capital expenditure, you will see that the capital expenditure um, is for the last three years. Uh, the replacement capital is um, just over 200 million per year. It ranges between 5 and 6% of revenue. 
the current financial year that we're in at the moment, we're also planning on spending 221 million on the replacement capital. This doesn't include um, the acquisition um, that we're doing, as, and it doesn't include any capital um, expenses for Jenkins or for Martin. That's um, on top of the 221 million. The 221 million is only the replacement capital that we're planning on spending. On the cash generation, um, you will see a compound annual growth rate on the cash um, flow generation of 17%. Um, the last year's growth is just over 13% on cash generation. Quite a strong um, cash generation. On iron ore pricing, we always get the, um, the question on how do you calculate the iron ore pricing. There's, there's a few different factors that you need to take into account. First, I have to you um, use the average, um, you take the daily iron ore price or the flat 62 price, um, you add them together for the month and you get the average for the month. On top of that, you add the lump premium, the average lump premium for the month. You add other quality adjustments for silica, alumina, manganese. To that, um, then you deduct the uh, logistics and marketing cost um, of that. You deduct the shipping cost. And then you convert it um, at the exchange rate up to the point where the shipping cost is deducted that was still in dollars. Um, so you have to convert it then back to rand. Um, we invoice um, at the end of the month um, based on the previous month's average pricing. And then three months down the line, we do get a, either a debit or a credit note when the um, product is finally, finally delivered in China. There's a correction on the price and it's then based on, on that. Uh, that month's pricing, and, and we then get an adjustment um, three months down the line. So on the bulk commodities, the different acquisitions, um, we did talk about some of them um, in Andres and in Grant presentations. m and um, the purchase consideration, the initial purchase consideration was 350 million. This purchase consideration doesn't include the working capital that uh, um, spent since we purchased the, the money. This is the pure purchase consideration. Um, there's no outstanding payments on them and in. The only capital that we plan on spending in them and in is staying business capital. Um, it, um, and the income that we earn there is dollar and it's all international export. Um, then, uh, Nikomati Anthracite, the purchase consideration, 290 million. Um, the biggest part of that 290 million was the IDC debt that we bought in, in the business director process. There's no outstanding payments from Tumati. Um, the product is sold locally in Rand, um, and the plant capex is 100 million um, from Tumati. Then the next, next acquisition is, is the COSA acquisition, which consists of the three mines, um, Denton, Grief, Pan, and Durham Pan. Um, the COSA acquisition does. Um, allow us to, to give more sustainability to the iron ore business. Um, we, and Andy starts on that in his presentation. Um, Jenkins is uh, coming online. We're already supplying out of Jenkins um, in the local market and the CapEx plant CapEx there, which we have spent um, already on that um, is 110 million. Um, then Driox Fund and Durham Fund will only come online at the latest stage. Then Frau and Hage, um, the plant capex at the moment is between 1.5 billion and 2 billion. Um, it includes the acquisition purchase consideration of approximately 650 million. Um, like Andre said, we are still working on on different plans and different scenarios to try and see if we can't uh, reduce the capital that we're going to spend uh, when we open up the mine. Um, so, so we're still busy with those um, calculations. The purchase consideration of 650 million uh, will be paid um, firstly 30 million, um, equivalent of 30 million US dollars and a 50 million for the property. Once we get um, all the conditions present under Section 11 and the, the water use license, um, and that is expected early, early in, in next year, the first quarter of next year. And then there's a second payment of 15 million US dollars, which is only payable 12 months after we start um, producing product out of that mine. Um, at the moment, um, the iron ore pricing, with the iron ore pricing where it is, the business is generating a lot of cash, and that cash will support us um, with, uh, with the expenses in, in the Grauenhaven. 
you know, to come back to the slide, I, I know Andres already showed this slide. Um, I want to show you a different angle, there's a different comment on this slide as we grew over the years. Uh, we would have seen that um, the return on equity and the return on net assets is well in excess of 30 percent. Um, and, and then we get the questions on how, how do you manage to get it there. Uh, when, and when you look at the opportunities, and God talked about all the opportunities, when, when we look at the opportunities, um, we, we not only look at just outperforming way. Uh, a lot of um, businesses look at it, it if the NPV or the net present value of the acquisition outperforms um, where um, they, they will proceed proceed with that transaction. For us, this was was always and there's still a lot of opportunity that uh, we we look at the IRR more and and we look at at opportunities that where the IRR is in excess of 20 percent. You can see that. Um, if the work of the company, I think much work is, um, is in the region of 12 or 13 percent, um, we, we won't do an acquisition or a deal to just outperform the work. We, we will look at um, at a deal where the IRR is north of 20 percent. And, and that does allow us some uh, for, for risk in, in the model and, and eventually we manage to, to get that return on equity. If we do that deal. And like I said, there's still a lot of opportunities that gives us that more than 20% um, internal right of return. So, yeah, just to summarize um, once again, the financials, um, the resignation strategy is, is evident from our financial. We have got a strong cash generation in the business, and that is currently allowing us to. Um, and support um, the acquisition that um, we bring with.